Okay, so mahalo for coming to Westpac uh, on this Monday evening, December 14th. And out of your busy schedule to learn more about the Shark God Caves, the Lena Akuhane, the Kahau Pahau Trails, and the ancient uh, um, farming areas in Eva um, Honouli Uli. As we can see, the Shark God Caves usually have entrances um, under by the reef that come in. Some of them are closer to land. What happens is the fresh water has acid in it. And as you can see, all of these areas are calcium carbonate cave systems or pahoehoe lava tubes or anas. And they transmit the fresh water that has this acid in them. And it eats through everything. And uh, then the sharks come up in here because most of our endemic fishes, uh, moi, akulkuli, mullet they switch over like salmon when they have to breed and they need fresh water so they breed underneath in these cave systems um, usually in the past they would go through all the streams and and uh, river outlets but the state has dammed <coughs> off all the natural flow of the streams so the only reason why our fisheries still exist today it's because the underground ana caves and the karst caves in in north maui there are certain pu'us that have waterfalls bigger than Niagara Falls falling into the ocean, okay? And uh, the water konohikis have taken me to those places. And they're the only reason why our fisheries are still going, because the breeding is taking place underground in those streams and rivers, okay? Next slide, please. Okay, here are this one. This cave system is very unique. This is called the Kupuna Cave System, and it starts up uh, in Kalihi uh, at the Wilson Tunnel. In the Hawaiian newspapers, they talked about the Shark God Cave up in the mountain. Okay, Some practitioners will say, oh, it's impossible because you can't go from the ocean all the way under and you get several thousand feet here. That's not how it works. If you read Mary Vena Pukui Nana Ikikumu 1, 2, 3, and 4, you will find that the sharks go upstream. They go up with their big flippers going up. Why? Akua noho. They're possessed by a spirit. So they don't operate under the natural laws that everybody else operates. Why do you think the god shark? Okay. So from Kupuna Cave, it goes all the way under here where um, Moanalua Valley is. And it goes underneath here where Leilono is. <laughs> and by Halava Stream is right over here. It crosses by Halava Stream where, in this point long time ago, the fish ponds, there were many fish ponds here. And this is the Southeast Lock. One of the Southeast Lock's uh, names is Pohakea. I said, oh, I thought Pohakea Pass was Pohakea. Guess what? There are three Pohakeas. What? Yeah. You have a Pohakea over here. Then a Poakea up here, and a Poakea where the Japanese flew through the pass. Why? Well, the name, Mana Inoa. Do you know what Poakea means? First light. First light. So when the sun's coming up, there are three places it hits at the same time. Yeah, up here in Halava Valley is Poakea Ridge. Southeast Lock is Poakea, and Poakea Pass. So when the sun comes up, boom, three places get hit at the same time, becoming Poakea. Oh, you learned something already. So this is part of it. Okay. So then it comes under here, under Ford Island or Moko Ume Ume, where there is Kane's Cave, where the fresh water is. And then it shoots over to Waipio Peninsula and goes underneath. And it's like, at this point, how do you know that, Mr. Lee? OK, I know that because it comes from the newspaper articles in the 1870s that talked about this. This is not my personal point of view. We did research. Um, for all of this and put in all the meticulous research we did. Then the LCAs, there are three LCAs here that are on this line. Three LCAs, Land Commission Awards. And one is for the Shark Cave and two are for the Mo'o Cave. And they all line up. As where do they continue? They continue to Ho'opili and pass Ho'opili. As we get to the volcanic um, uh, ridge over here, the, the volcano right over here. So 
this one is notice it's different from these these are uh, from north to south north to south north to south this one is from east to west what does that mean it's very important when it goes east to west this is the foundational cave what do you mean foundational cave oh when the island was being built like four million years ago the the volcano was up here in Kalihi and it didn't flow down this way it was much lower and it flowed because it eroded after four million years it eroded uh, it the lava flow went from east to west before this was formed okay Pearl Harbor was formed because you know it's uh, Waimalu Waimano everything's white 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 because this is the largest aquifer of fresh water it's 70 percent of our fresh water comes from here La Ye is part of a lot of fresh water in the past and Manoa Valley doesn't even come close this is the powerhouse right here because everything is white 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 but these hills of the Ko'ola mountains were not formed yet they weren't formed so this was not formed when what you see in Puna from the big island the, the lava coming down over here there was no water here it was just coming down okay and then piling up on each other and creating the Ana cave system so this is the oldest one, okay? And this is uh, part of the Pahukaina cave system that, you know, is, is part of the um, Hawaiian Historical Society report. And so Hawaii is riddled with a transportation underground of fresh water called Pahukaina, okay? It goes from Laie, and it, the Laie one, which is way up here in Laie, comes down here under Halava and then comes down here and this is the Kahaupau, Kahaupahu uh, Shark God Cave System and this is Waipahu Depot Road. It's right next to Waipahu Depot Road. There's an there's a office building right up here and it was bought by Mr. Parrish, the son of the Parishes from Eva, well-known family, okay? And he bought that in 2004 and put a professional building well when they dug down guess what they found Paha cave and all the water was gushing out and he videotaped it gave the videotape to his sister and they lost it but uh, that whole building he sued his contractor and in one year uh, they didn't put the elevator where they were going to put where the Paha cave was gushing on the water okay but that building sunk a foot three feet in one year okay and all the water came up to the parking lot because if if you block it one way it'll come up another way okay so in the great Mahele, it talks about this this uh pahau's cave and it the opening doesn't just come here doesn't there is a kind of opening but the opening is actually here where the queen shark pahau pahau assigned a, a warrior here and then he would see when the sharks are passing who's coming in and what are, and then he would report on the ground to her okay and according to the history of Kanalu okay uh, it states that the shark goddess the queen was the sister of Tutu Pele and Kamoho Ali'i according to the genealogy okay so that goes back a thousand years. So this particular cave system that goes um, through here uh, intersects here where the, sh the, the sharks were reported and known to be and reported here and reported here and reported here because there are breaks within the cave system. Like uh, this one with Mokume Ume Island, you know, there are certain breaks through the system. This one over here is her brother Kahiuka. Okay. Now, just to let you know a little bit more, we warned the rail about these caves five years ago, and we put documentation into the AIS and everything. If you go by Farrington Highway um, over here by um, Queens Hospital, um, Kahimohala, right across by the Hono <coughs> Uli Uli uh, Historic Bridge, they're having sinkholes started this February when they put the pylons in 
And when I saw them and took pictures of those sinkholes in May, they were only two feet deep. And our Kanihiri cultural hui made a big stink about it in the Kako'o meetings, which is part of the programmatic um, agreement. And we said, look, your, your big pylon pillars, piers, whatever you want to call them, they're creating big sinkholes because of what's going underneath. So when we went back, it went nine feet deep five months later. So we'll pass that around. Okay, now what did they tell me when we did an on-site, on tape? They said, that was Phil land. And I said, are you kidding me? That land's been, okay, number one, Phil land is usually the salt pans at below sea level, like Ala Moana and stuff like that. That's when you have Phil lands. But these lands are 240 feet above sea level, and there is no map ever showing that it was not used for farming for the last 180 years. So how can it be fill land? And that was the engineer who said that for the rail. Susan Lieber, the um, archaeologist for SHBD, chimed in and said, no, it's fill land. And the Kako um, archaeologist, Paul Klager, said fill land. I said, impossible. You guys are just making it up just because you can't. Because you see those holes, you can jump in and your head is, is below and it's continuing to go. Now why I bring this up is because of the Kahi Uka, he's the brother of Ka'ahu Pahau. And his cave is over here. Okay, and it goes under here where um, Leeward uh, is is there, Leeward College is there. And I told them, it's there, you know, by Leeward College. Well, if you go onto the H1 freeway by Waipahu on that, that on-ramp that goes under the big rail overpass that they're completing, it was left open, I was wondering if it was gonna snap off and fall on everybody. But they're now, they're now bridging that big uh, rail thingy 200 feet towards the uh, 200 feet right over here, here's where the, the co college is. There's the short little tree and a post, and it's about, I'd say it's about 100, uh, 250 feet from the big rail uh, overpass that they're building. It's a 10-foot sinkhole happening there, a 10-foot oh. sinkhole. We had Tom Berg fill it, he jumped in and went inside to film the sinkhole. He couldn't be here to bring those pictures. But are we seeing a pattern forming here that cause and effect? Because as they've moved down, this is really ridiculous, but as they've moved down here to Pearl Ridge, or <coughs> going here, where Don Quixote's is, across the street you've got Don Quixote's and you've got um, Zippy's. And then you go across the street, there's a professional building where the flamingos are. And you go, you go Mackay side, and it's the graveyard that's had all the problems. Four sinkholes opened up three months ago. <coughs> that they're just putting dirt in. But you're seeing the pattern. When you block the underground water, it finds its own path. And we've seen in Florida, the, this case of that sad man who was sleeping, his whole house fell in on him and kept on going down. They've never found him or his body today. And on the anniversary of it sinking in, it started sinking in again. So they just put dirt and stuff, and, and it started sinking in all over again. So health and safety, you know, are, this is what we call TCPs, traditional uh, cultural properties, our traditional cultural properties, yeah? So, but health and safety of the workers and the people going to use the rail and live in the area. Okay, now we have on this book the eel boy cave that goes this way. Okay, in Halawa we have some shark god caves entrances up here, and in Kapalama at um, the entrance for Kamehameha School, there's a shark god cave there. So, I mean, you see what's going on is that there are more shark god caves and eel caves around. So what we try to do is say, hey, they're here. Here's all the documentation from the newspapers. And then we drew them the line okay, to show where the proximity of these things are. Can we go to the next? Uh? OK. So 
highlighted here on this um, 1850s map, um, these pink areas are all where there's fish ponds and fresh water. Okay. And what does all this fresh water do? Well, number one, where's all this fresh water coming from? Springs, mm -hmm. underground, ana, caves. Yeah. And so these are all hot spots for your shark gods and your eels and your mo'os to, to transverse under the, um, under the cave system, uh, Pohukaina or Pahukaina, as part of the underground bridge that nobody sees for the stuff that are being conducted below. Here in Eva, we have several springs here that come out, and Ordi Pond that's up here. You know, they're all connected to the ocean, transversing, bringing fresh water. And that's why we have so much Nemo, because Nemo needs fresh water because the nutrients, not nitrates. Nitrates are the pollution that causes the bloom of um, invasives. They love that, okay? But our kuku and limu work together. They actually work together like a family, ohana limu. And in working together, they partner. The uh, huruhuru manawea takes care of 14 different limus in its vegetation reproduction state. Okay. Okay, let's continue, please. Next one. Okay. So, we did some digging, <coughs> some sleuthing. We go back to the Damon estate. <coughs> the infamous Damon, Pilau Damon estate. But what do we find in that Damon estate? Okay, we find that Admiral Nimitz, he's doing all these letters, and we have all his letters of him talking about the Shakat cave to other admirals, okay? And they're joking that they're not Hawaiian and stuff like that, you know? And they're good friends with, um, they're good friends with Mr. Damon. But this was before the big report because what happened in 1909, they were on the, on the southeast lock, um, which is called um, uh, the fish pond was called um, Kapakuli. Kapakuli. It had, um, on the right side, it had the Hina stone that when it went low tide, you could see it. And it had the, the Ku'ula stone, which is shaped like the head of an octopus. And you never see it because the octopus never goes out of water. It's below. Um, and that particular cave there was for Kupipi. Kupipi is the son of Ka'ahau Pahau. And this is a report in 1944 that came out in May to the Navy because Ka'ahau Pahau came in 1909 and broke up the docks. Did today would be $10 million back then. It would be hundreds of millions of dollars back now. She came in and wrecked the whole thing, took it apart. And that was no horror pretend movie, it was for real. And within the body of evidence that um, we got from the um, Damon estate, we got the letters and we got the reports, what, what they put together for the final version that came out to the Navy that had more information that you could never find in any other sources, like the mo'o for Pearl Harbor was mentioned. And I had always known that the mo'o had a big fight with the Konehiki, that's Kanekua mo'o. She had a big fight with the, the Konehiki of that area. And I never knew why, and there's no sources except in these letters, they tell why. Is that a relative of hers went to pick um, part of the PPE shells and stuff she wasn't supposed to. The, the um, Konehiki caught her, scolded her, made her throw it back. She felt really bad. And then he followed her home and wanted money. Now, listening to this whole thing was the mo'o, who was traveling underwater and looking up, and they didn't see the mo'o. Uh, and the mo'o was really angry, because that was his, her relative that was being harassed. So what she did was she took all of the, the pearl shells out, left some, and took them back to Tahiti and started removing everything from Pearl Harbor in 1853. This most people do not know is that Kamehameha III was cursed to die 
because of this and also another mo'o um, in Moku'ula because he had promised that he would set up a place at where Iolani Palace is for the mo'os and he would protect them and he would do this and he would do that and he never followed through with his promise. So the mo'os cursed him to death and he drank, he drank, and this is in the book Moku'ula. He drank himself to death because of the pain of the curse because he didn't fulfill his obligation to the mo'os, okay? So, um, Again, these, this information was really good to bring out, and we, we brought it in, in this huge uh, compilation that we gave to um, the Federal Transportation Agency, because we, we want to turn this into a federally protected habitation zone for the living sharks that still, the family that still lives around, you know? Because Kahal Pahau isn't dead. She's in North Maui fishing around in the deep ocean with her mother. So can we go to the next slide? Okay, this is part of the, the, the report of July 1909 when Pahau Pahau busted up. This is the damage she did. She took down the, the reef, the, the, the whole docks, and what they did is dry dock. What they did was they pulled out all the water after she damaged the $10 million worth of damage. Now you have to realize She's about 80 feet long, you know, she's like a megalodon. So, and she's not the biggest one, okay? The biggest one is about 120 feet long and 90 feet wide. And that's Tutu Peli's brother and true son, Neil Pio's son from her father, okay? So, so, so I just have yeah. one question. Sure. So in this Western writing, they are actually attributing oh, yeah. the damage? Okay. Oh, just yeah. Wanted, I just wanted oh, to yeah. say it was an earthquake. Oh, no. no. Okay. Everybody knew because the, the Navy contracted someone to get rid of Pahau Pahau. And it was an elderly Hawaiian woman that sent the instructions of using ash and other things to remove Kahau Pahau from her residence there to shush her away. So this is the action, and this is part of the documentation, and, and that report talks about the shark goddess damaging that cave system. Okay, continue. Okay, the Kupuna <coughs> cave system, this actually, this particular old, old system lies with Leilono, um, uh, the leaping off place, because when we get into the Lena, Here's Leilono over here. Hupipi Cave, Akani Cave, Waipio, Moku, uh, uh, this is La La Nui, and it goes underneath here where the rail is. It actually lines up with the sun for the Lena Akuwahane. For the shark gods to go underneath to help their family get to where <coughs> the sun is setting, I'm, I'm kind of rushing ahead, to do the leaping point. Okay, we'll go into it, but it's really fascinating how the shark gods and the mo'os can whisper to the spirits from Leilono when a Hawaiian died, <coughs> the central, central uh, depot, like bus depot, sucks you to Leilono up here, okay? And then it sends you on the journey of the setting sun. Like you see in the Hobbit, all of the elves went in the ships to go into the west. Well, that's where the Akua are, in the west as the sun goes down. And we'll go more into it when we get on the Leilona to open up the secret door so you understand a little bit more. Okay. This is really, really fascinating. I mean, it's mind-boggling how all of this was layer upon layer because the pueo, the <coughs> ope apea, the bat, uh, alala, um, the birds, uh, io, whatever, um, can also use this corridor to help out their family as almakuas to get to the leaping off place, but I'm jumping ahead, so we're on the shotgun case. <coughs> this is an interesting intersection. Mike, yes. Can you best estimate how wide do you think the cave is? Oh, I'm glad you asked that question. Okay. Because, <laughs> thanks Billy, because when they did the excavation about 40 feet down here, they found nine feet across and nine feet up, okay? And they found three springs in there. It's in the report. Freshwater spring, brackish water spring, salt spring, and they found the skeleton of a shark, 14 feet, in that cave. 
nine feet wide by nine feet. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, oh my goodness, you know. Wow, this, this is real chicken skin. So, you know, Hawaiian stuff is so, like, beyond the beyond. The Greek stuff is for fake, ours is for real, and still <laughs> is going on now. You know, they're still around. Okay, well, let's hell on to the next uh, thing. I'm getting chicken skin talking about that part. Okay. Okay. So, as you can see, it, it continues um, for over here. We can jump to the next part. Okay. And then it shows you Hono Uli Uli Kalo fields and uh, the Palehua trails. You see how it intersects uh, for this because the Kaahaupahau Ka trails, when Lieutenant Malden, the cartographer in the Blan, the ship that brought Kamehameha II's body back, when it came here, they did the first mapping, extensive mapping of, of Oahu on this side. And um, the trails that are here, they called it the Malden trails, because he put it on the map, but it's the Kahau Pahau trails, yeah? Because for us, shark gods turn into human beings and walk around. And then, boom, they turn back when they go into it, because it's Akua Noho, okay? And there's a supernatural element, space component for this, but we're not here for that. So we'll continue on, or we'll be here all night. So let's go on to uh, next slide. Okay, here, you know, I told you, this is like crazy. Here are the LCAs that deal with, okay, the, the shark hole. This is the one right over here. And the Kalua Mo'o hole, okay, right over here. Look, it just bump, bump. And then we have the, um, over here, the Kalua uh, Mo'o cave, which is right over here. So bump, bump, bump. Moko Ume Ume Island. Bump, 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 as it moves out, you know. And it's on the LCAs for the names of the place because the caves are there. Okay, let's continue on. Okay, so this is this is um, the bus transit place, yeah? Yeah, and this is depot, this is the uh, Waipahu Depot Road, okay? I brought this years ago, and I got <laughs> this from the rail before they started putting the pylons. They said, we're not gonna put stuff there. Well, they put stuff there. And then I said, you put stuff here, we put stuff here, and I told you not to put the stuff here, and they said, that's okay, we did our consultation with you, we did everything we're supposed to do. Oh, yeah, that's their attitude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. this is sassy attitude of, we did what we're supposed to do. Yes. Okay, continue. So oh. much that at um, Campbell School, we have the, the statue of Kahapaha. You know, <coughs> can we continue? There she is. Okay, the shark. Yeah, the baby feet, the shark. Yeah. All right. Where is that's the statue? A, this is at um, Campbell School, you know. So, you know, this is right by the parking lot out there. It matters, you know. And of course, Pearly Shells, mm -hmm. that whole song, talks mm -hmm. about how pa how. Exactly. In our songs, in our lore, it's living worthy of being understood, passed on, and protected. Okay, let's continue. Okay, is it the end of this one? Okay, so we're now going to jump to the lena, but I'll give any questions anybody want to ask for the shark, because then we're going to jump to the lena. Okay. The Land Commission Awards, I have all the names of the people, and I actually have the boundary notes. So I went in and got boundary notes of the LCAs of all of these properties. Just to show you, okay, the rail never wanted to listen to me. This is the, this is the Pahau Pahau cave. Just to show you, this is three years ago. I went to a meeting with their specialist because they didn't want to hear it or see it. And I came in 15 minutes before I put this map down of the LCAs and I show where it's connected, and I have all the pertinent information for the new case on this. And she said, I gotta see you later. And that's when they started working with me. I'm gonna pass this around since inquiring minds want to know. Inside, reading. So it has the emails with Mr. Parrish, and it has where he's at, the TMKs, all of the little in the weed stuff. 
Yeah. Yeah. The first shark cave, the one from the book of Yes. It's about four million years ago, before the Ko'olaus were formed, because because then they started coming. Then this was this was lava cave all the way across under Pearl Harbor, below the water, forty feet under. So the the volcano was coming up and flowing like you see on Puna, and melting everything as it flowed, and then building on each other, making the Ana Cave. So that's the oldest cave. And Kupuna is the oldest cave. And the second one is from Hawaii coming down to Yeah, yeah. Again, yeah. Yeah, but that's, that's like north to south or northwest to southwest. Anything north to west is younger. East to west is the oldest. Yeah. <coughs> okay, the Lena Aku Ohane. Okay. Oh, it's not moving? I just ordered it. You want to go back? Oh. Uh, oh yeah, okay. So um, here's the here is where Leilono is, and what we're looking at is the directional from east to west, okay. And this is very important because most people don't know how the Lena works because it's Kahuna stuff. So this is Kahuna 101, okay. So let's move on, and here's the Pearl Harbor base and everything. Okay, this is a good one. The Lena is the leaping off place, and as I say, the, the spiritual transit station for Oahu <laughs> is you're forced to go to Leilono. You can't help it, you're stuck there. Okay, no choice, whatever time of the year. But it's a clock, it's a clock with the sun. Okay, and what I'm talking about is if you're in, if you're in January 8th, the, the sun will be out here. It's, it goes more to the goes more to the south, yeah. So winter time, the clock would go this way, right in front of the proposed entrance of the Eva Marina, okay. And as you go from January to February to March, this would be April, May, June. Okay, come on, Kalamaiyao. This is military. One is none, and two is one. Okay, I got a backup. Turn that one on, just in case. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so like April, May, June, July, August, September. You can see there's a swath here, you know, when you do it. And then it resets <coughs> back to January. And what that means, is, oh, by the way, just to by the way for the real deal, proof of concept, oops, is um, here at the entrance channel of the Eva Marina is where my fifth great grandmother was buried and they found her Ivi Kupuna with two Niho Palawas and that was it actually lines up to it lines up to January 8th when she died 1796 and that's why they planted her there because that was her leaping off place for that time of the year. Mm -hmm. So what that tells us, the lay of the land, it tells us you know, what places are the leaping off place. But it doesn't end there. It doesn't end there. Because remember, our Leilono is different from everybody else's Leilono. <coughs> Why? Because we have wandering souls. Because not everybody's amakua's kokua and help them. Either they weren't good or whatever. And guess what? Mary Kavena Pukui's uh, Olelo Na'iao says that they end up in the Vili Vili trees mm. out in Eva, which are still there in Waimanagalo Gulch and in, in the trees. And they end up, depending on the time of the year of the sun, they can't go further because they're locked into a path that has been established as boundary zones, spiritual boundary zones. So they're stuck up in the trees, yeah? Mm. And in different times of the year, you know? And it, they can't get out of it, whether it's in January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, then psh, back to January. Now, there are actually lava arrows pointing to the um, leaping off place at Ka'ena Point, that when they were digging it up for the highways, they found these pointers, you know. So, what I'm saying here, Eva Field, 
was just recognized by the state as the first battlefield and the federal rules for recognition for federal historical battle sites and stuff, usually the way the wording goes is where the feet have walked, it's sacred, yeah? But remember, Everfield was the first place to get dive bombed by the Zeros and strafed. So where are the feet? It's not the feet, it's an air attack. And so 180 acres were set aside during the attack where all the bullets were coming down and the strafing was happening from the air. Well, what does Leilono have to do? The air, the spirits. So when the rules come to set it aside for protection area and recognition, you can't say, oh, just Leilono and just the leaping off side, uh-uh. It goes by where the sun comes and touches the land like a big um, clock that swaths throughout the land because <coughs> It was known out here in Waikiki where the aquarium is, you could say Pu'ukapule as the sundial that you would set where the sun was at Pu'ukapule, whether the south during the winter or moving in the center during the summer or moving up to the northwest during the uh, winter. It was the sundial. And all of that is a composite component of a large complex. It's a spiritual complex. So it's hard to wrap your head around this stuff, but it was the true operating procedure for the spiritual realm here on Oahu, which was different than everybody else's. Because the way the matrices were made up, below ground, on top ground, and above ground. All play in on this. <coughs> I mean, it's like, oh, this is so amazing. It's just, you know, knock your socks off okay continue next one okay so this was the hearts you know this is how they 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 wordsmith and engineer this thing why because they don't know so but they don't just don't know they want to miss all their building projects that hunt development that miss the rail and stuff like that so they say oh we did what <coughs> we checked all our boxes for all of this but uh, there's no effect on all of this stuff. So that's where Connie Healy Hui is coming in and saying, ah, 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 ah. Let's educate you guys on the operating principles of Kanaka truth here. And we show them and the jaws drop and it's like, uh, can't you stick to step seven, which is the education component for all your good work and do a coloring <coughs> book and go away. So, ah, 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 ah. Okay, let's, let's continue with this. Okay, so here, the leaping off point uh, starts over here at Leilono and boom, right across, Pew. okay, for this time of the year. And it goes right over under Ho'opili and stuff, so we're saying, hey, Ho'opili train station, move, <laughs> move, you know? And they're saying, uh, 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 and we're saying, okay, if you don't move, the whole thing goes sink. <laughs> okay, teach them, teach them a lesson like um, in, um, uh, Maui, where they built the Safeway, you know, th this was uh, all, all burial grounds, and we were we were the kahu that that did the burials for the the burials, and it's on YouTube and stuff um, in Wailuku. Stuff flying off the shelves, and they don't have security anymore because where all the burials are, what the security guards would see on camera, there is no security there. And I think they only have one or two other outlets that decided to sign up. But they've been cursed ever since they built it there. Yeah? We can only pray. Yeah. Yeah, over there. The safe way over there. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. Okay, here's the January 5th. There's the Eva Marina right there. The entrance channel is where Tutu was buried. She's now in the preserve. Uh, they haven't allowed us to pay honor and tribute to her for over a year. We've been writing and writing. And so I've asked State Historic Preservations Officer <coughs> Regina Hilo to step in. Because, you know, they always do this to Kanakas. You, you have no rights in a place where nobody has to prove who they are. We've got to prove we're Hawaiian. We've got to prove everything. And then they deny us all our rights under the law. Yeah? But this shows you where the clock starts off here in January, February, March. April, May, June, 
July, August, September, October, November, December. So it's from here to there. Now you know. I mean, nobody knows this. So the, <coughs> what you said were the arrows at Kaena. Yeah. That would be when the latter part. Oh, yeah. As you can see, let's see. So Kaena's over here. That would be in the winter months. I mean, to sure. the winter of the day. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. Around December. Going out this way. December. Yeah, so from December to January. Then it clicks off down to here. Because some have said that it's Kaena is the leaping off, but it's not. Kaena. Oh, it, it's not the only. It's not the only because it, it's predicated by the sun setting. Yeah? Because that's where the Aku, the gate for the Aku, the gate of the gods, to welcome them. At the time, the sun is the anchor. Yeah? Gravity rules, sucking everything down like the black hole, sucking everything <coughs> down. So it, it pulls. So what we're talking about, the leaping point, is bam, 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 there is a systematic thought process connected to the sun and to the place that is the anchor for the spirits. And on your journey, if you don't have Amakuas assisting you, you lose Bakwi. You know. Okay, next one. Okay, so this is a Google Map uh, thingy. So the transverse is here. The island is broken up into four sections. Lono is here. Uh, where Chinaman's hat is over here is Kanaloa. Um, where Eva is is Kane. You know, Ayahea Kavai Akane, where are the waters of Kane? And Ku is out where the North Shore in a point stuff is. So it's broken. So it's like a big sundial breaking everything up. Yeah? Pretty good. So, um, okay, so we can continue. Okay, so this one is July. So you can see July is moving out here. Mm -hmm. July, August, September, October, November. Yeah. Okay, continue. Okay, so for you know for the heart rail, we put under step nine and step twelve that this was new information that we brought to the table, voluminous stuff, which was this that was uh, sent to um, TSA with all of our information and sources and everything backing <coughs> up what we said and they they're supposed to take um, something like three weeks they took oh, like two months to make their decision and they didn't even look at our stuff and they gave us some rehash stuff that was there before so we're appealing their ruling to the higher and we have a do we have the petition? We have a petition afterwards. If you could sign, um, that would be helpful, you know. Okay, so we move to. Is okay. there a petition online? Not yet, not yet. But the petition we'll do tonight is very important because that will go into the talks directly on Wednesday. That's how pertinent it is. Yeah? Yeah. So quality. Okay. So the, the next portion that we're going, John's going to be doing the, the next two, and that will be the Malden Trails. Uh, John, you need the laser pointer? No, okay. uh, at least uh, not yet. Okay, let me know when you do. So fundamentally what this is is drawing the line in the sand. Yeah. And we're going to do even more because we got pictures of whales in Kalo'i Gulch. Uh, and Honouli Uli has a rare Hawaiian damselfly. There are ibises and Hawaiian stilts that come up in Honouli Uli. Akoko grows um, where Barbara's Point is. The Vili Vili trees are there. We have rare Hawaiian plants. So our next step is to partner or to contact the federal fisheries to find out if hunt development, the rail, and Ho'opili has done a preservation protection plan for our rare Hawaiian species, birds, and stuff. If they haven't, we're going to sue uh, to be a consulting party and make them put $10 million aside to protect all of these things within it. So 
we're doing many levels. John's going to be talking about the Malden slash Kaapahau trails and the um, agriculture that was there. Um, and we brought all of this information to the table under step 9 and step 12. And holding their feet to the fire is very important. They were so frightened of what we did, they shut down the Kako meetings. We haven't had any in October, November, or December. They got a very well-known cultural practitioner to get with Leimana and Rocky to say everything we brought to the table is nothing. And don't listen to oral Hawaiian stuff. It's nothing. And it's like everybody was dumbfounded because that's the core. It's our core of our culture, Kumulipo, is oral. You know, so you take away that, that's open season for total destruction on a massive scale. So, you know, this this was dumbfounding when we saw that. Yes. Okay. Okay. How many points are there in on a wall? Oh, thank you. Okay, well there are there's one at Nuuanu by Saint Stephen's Seminary. Um, there is another one by Leilono and of course Kaena and Eva. So four four are known. Okay, so here is the, you can read this, and this is the, um, what we're passing around is the, we're asking them to do the right thing under the law. Um, I don't have a pen. Do you have a pen? Okay. Yeah, what's important about this is that there's a big meeting on Wednesday. The Navy is transferring a lot of land out in Hawaii law, and sure, we're asking of everybody to uh, Facebook ask that they follow the law, which is to uh, allow public comment. Yep particularly for uh, Native Hawaiian organizations or practitioners on the land transfer. Legally, they're supposed to do this. It's federal property. It's a major transfer to Hodge Corporation. So we, we have an attorney in Washington, D.C. who would take this to the Navy and say, there's interested parties you're not listening to. Uh, you, should, you should legally consult with them. And we've been asking about this, and even Alan Downer and Chippy has agreed that Kanahili Hui should be included in the consultation, but Really, any one of you should also be Everybody, included. all your groups. You have the legal right to be consultants. Where is this it? Is, uh, this is for the Navy land transfer. It's not the heart rail, uh, but it's a major trip. Most people don't know about this because they've kept it very under the radar. Well, see, this is how, okay, when they created the rail, they made it an authority. By doing it, it's its own independent little government thing. I have, <coughs> in this, this, they, they only take, people can, the only people can go to these meetings are all of you guys, but you have to go under your civic club or the elders of Y9, whatever your organizations are, you can sign up to go to these meetings as a consulting party of the programmatic agreement. This is how they didn't want the general public who is paying for this $10 billion fiasco not to be a part of it. And I'm saying Olelo should be in every meeting broadcasting live to the stakeholders, which is the taxpayers, to show what's really going on in these meetings. And they literally ejected John after four years we, we, we were recognized. So finally I said, John, you've got to come down to these meetings. He's the president of our organization, Kanahili Kui. And they ejected him and wouldn't let him come. And I said, are you crazy? I have the email. We were accepted by FTA four years ago. But they purposely ejected him by his reputation. They didn't want him. In the, and then they apologized the next month for the next month's meeting. It's like, uh, we didn't know. I mean, this is like, this is like um, fascists, you know, just to let you know. Okay? Well, it's a game they all play, which is they just don't want to hear from people because yeah. they don't want to know the truth. They don't want to hear what people really think, so they just keep it all bottled up and keep it out of the loop. And that's what the Navy is doing now with this land transfer. Uh, they're keeping everybody unaware of a major transfer that everyone <coughs> legally should have a right to comment on. Mike? Yes. Oh, uh, question. Uh, are you free to describe your, uh, your great grandfather? Oh, sure, sure, sure. I, yes. Um, yes. Uh, the two Niho Palawas, um, and we put it into our court documents, and you can go online, and um, Mike Lee versus William Isla for Eva Marina. And we put the genealogy in that, that whole thing. And um, we never knew our genealogy till we did the case and had to look. 
and that's Kamehameha III's true mother, Kaomile Kaahumanu Namahana Kapu. And it's his, Kamehameha III's true mother. He was born in January of 1796, not 1815. And if you go online to Kamehameha III, Google images and look at all the images of Kamehameha III, only the photography images match up. All the paintings and everything before does not. Okay, Kamehameha III was never trained to be king or a spare. They didn't even think that he was gonna ever become king. So brother had a lot of problems when he ended up being king, but he was a lot older than many people know because in the LCA documents, I have 20 certified LCA documents of Haoli's and native tenants saying I got this land in 1824 from Kamehameha III. Impossible, because one of the lands in 18, 1824, he's 10 years old. A boy cannot give land away at 10. You gotta get Kalaimoku or Ka'ahumanu to co-sign for him, or Boki, he's too young. Until you become a full-blown man, you can't give land away. They don't let children run around like a play toy giving all this land away. But here's all this certified document. And in fact, they have one document to Lord Byron, who brought Kamehameha II's body to Hawaii. Kamehameha III is giving the land, and they said, oh, but he's a little boy. So Kalaimoku had to co-sign. So what about the other 24? There were two Kamehameha III's. There was the Kamehameha III behind the throne because Ka'ahumanu wanted to be queen forever, but she didn't have high rank to be that. Brada was never trained to be king. He was a playboy. Read the, the book of Moku'ula. He was, he was making love to all his cousins and everybody on Moku'ula Island, and not until the death of Kamehameha II did he have to start coming to the background. And the only way that Ka'ahumanu could hold control was she wanted to be queen for life. He didn't care. She was good. She was good at it. So he wanted to be playboy for life. So they had a little boy trundled out, probably in the family, known as Iokuni. And he was trundled out with Nahiena Ena. She's for real. But this little boy is not. And the real Kamehameha III stayed behind the scenes because in capable, competent hands of Ka'ahumano till she died. The problem is she died in 1833, and he had to take over. And then all of a sudden, this, this big guy comes out from the shadows. Because in all the writing, it says, in 1820, when the missionaries came, this little boy was with the missionaries learning English. He had a governess, and he was learning the stuff. You look in the records, and you can go on Google Book Search, and you'll find this. In 1839, Kamehameha III has his English interpreter to tell him what's going on because he only speaks Hawaiian. Huh? He was with the missionaries as that little boy, Iwakuni, for how many years? And it goes this whole thing about this little boy being with the missionaries. And uh, Papa Ii, who was born in 1790, who was the keeper of Kamehameha II, okay? He says Kamehameha III never became a Christian. What? How can that be possible when he's with them all the time learning <laughs> English and then you go through the records, he can't speak English. He's got to have an interpreter, and he was never a Christian, though he's giving all the money and the land for all of these missionaries. But there's two stories that are running here. How come it doesn't match up? You know, so you know, and then you look at his photograph before he dies. He's supposed to be 39. Brada is like pushing 60. Okay, we know forensics and how to age people on milk cartons, little kids. You do the same thing to the painting from the artist on the blonde of Kamehameha III to the photographs of Kamehameha III, they don't match up. Bridge of the nose, cheekbones, width, hair, chin, it doesn't match up. So part of the story that keeps Hawaiians in check is a false story that keeps people on one track and you don't stay on this other track. So there's a, there's a whole story, but we want to get back to this, but that opened the can of worms. But I was mandated by Keakua, tell the story when you go out, tell the truth, okay? It is what it is, yeah. So Iokuni? Iokuni is the name. It's, the in, it's in the native testimonies. That name is in the native testimonies, Iokuni. He was Mo born when? That, that, that child was born in 1814. Yeah. 
Yeah, so he was the little boy that was trundled out because, and in Marin's journals, Don Paul Marin, okay, he outs everybody. He outs everybody because he tells the truth. He has no reason to lie. However, several parts of his journals are missing. You know, like the birth of this Kamehameha three would be a big thing. It ain't in there. And Nahi Ana Ana, it ain't in there. How come people don't know the exact date of the birth of Kamehameha three yet? In the memoirs of Keopulani, she has the exact date for Kamehameha II. What happened of this big Neo Pio children drop out of the, the zone when they remember everybody else's birthday, but these guys fall behind? Well, Ka'ahumanu was the most competent ruler that Kamehameha III, he said, I'd give half my kingdom for her. She's so competent, and he knew it. And he was a playboy all his life. Why get involved when she's running the thing, you know? But when she died unexpectedly of smallpox, then everything changed. The playboy had to start coming out. But what happened? They put the Kuhina Noi of Mikahela Kikau Onohi and his half-sister Kinao to keep watch over him. Why were they so panicky about this boy? Mm -hmm. Why did they have to keep him under watch and have co-signers from an absolute monarch? Why did they have to? And by 1839, and it's in the Hawaiian newspapers, he pushes back all of these uh, Kuhina Nui's and said, I am the king. You know, it's not a little young man. It's a 40, 30 something year old man that is asserting himself. So this this history is is uh, something deeper. Yes. Yes, one for his sister, La Amea. There is, no, wait. I'll say that most people don't know he had a sister. In the KSB, Commitment School's Genealogy Online, you go, I didn't bring it but I have the whole thing. You go online for Kamehameha III, you'll see his five wives. He had many lovers, yeah? But he has five wives. He has Kalama, okay, February 2nd, 1837. Two sons, okay, Keaviavi Ola Oka I, 1832, before he got married, died. Keaviavi Ola Oka II, 1839, died shortly after. Nahi Ena Ena, Niao Pio, okay. He had actually two children from her. One much earlier than 1836, September. Son dies because she was drinking heavy through her whole pregnancy because you're getting mixed messages here. You know, there's a lot of things covered up. But she had a daughter way before that. She had a daughter like 1829, okay. And that daughter was taken away from her. Okay, then you get to three other, three other wives, La'amea, Ali'i Haoli, and Kua'o'o. Okay, so five wives. Okay, when you go into the Maui genealogy, G15, in the archives, they go, this genealogy was made in January 1864. And they tell you who some of these characters are. They say that Ali Haole was Wahikapu. And they say that um, Laamea was Niao Pio, Ahikapu, which is the highest, which had to come from Keopuolani. Yeah. So all of a sudden, this stuff opens up and goes like, oh my God, what happened to this history? You know, um, it's, it's there. It is there and it's in books. But the history we're taught is not the true history because that history keeps the power in, in because that keeps everybody down. It doesn't empower you. When you find out the true history, all of a sudden, no holds bar. The thing opens up. Yeah. Okay, so, um, so the, the Kamehameha III, the one that has the 1.8 million acres and it's crossed off, 1.8 million. The probate number, I have to but is this Iho Kuni, could he have had another name? Probably. William Naukana? I, I don't know what it is. Kamehameha III had several children that he was grooming, boys. Okay, it's it's in the Hawaiian historical. I have the, the names of those people that he had. So this, this is a, this is six foot of certified documents, but I have to yes. go back to our, refocus this back to John Bond's presentation for a minute.
Okay, so we finish and conclude this. Okay. Yeah, I'll run through fairly quickly. So. Uh, just to, for you notice, this is this this painting which is beautiful. It was there about 1880s or something? It's what's great about it is that this is uh, Hula Loa or Pearl Harbor way before anything happened. So that's how it used to look. No mangrove. Uh, this is the painting you can even comment. This is one of the we were talking about here, right? So, this is the HMS Blonde that brought this group over here, and it's important because they brought the uh, royal family uh, from England who had died. In so, if you want to say anything about this, go ahead. By the way, this picture hangs in the, the governor's house. Probably most people don't know why, why it's there, but it's really one of the most important voyages in Hawaiian history that had major changes on everything. It's kind of like Pearl Harbor or something. So um, this is the series of trail maps that we've used that helped to establish a lot of uh, information. And Mike's done all the further research and all these things. Um, this uh, 1825 or approximately, they did several versions of this, but this map shows really key things. It shows Le Lono. You think, well, how would a guy, Englishman, map this area cartographer yet he put in just certain things that somebody had to told him that this is really important you got to have this in your map 1825 so he puts in Leilono. Lono this is the leaping off place and so uh, this is Hono Uli Uli which was really uh, a lot of people forget too that this was the largest Native Hawaiian population on Oahu um, anywhere it had a major population here everyone's forgotten about them and they unfortunately were uh, the victims of the early introduction of uh, transmittable diseases and a large number of these people died very quickly in a, in a matter of five or ten years and they're all buried out here because they weren't taking the punch bowl to be buried so that's why we've made a case that this is a major burial ground out here in uh, where Ho'opili uh, Ho is they're buried right there the trail shows it going around the island all the way over to uh, Pu'okapole, which of course was a very important Heiau area at that time and remains uh, today. Uh, the important thing about the trail too, it shows the trail going to Oniula Beach and other to the other trails, Kualakai. Um, and then the, this trail over here is going up to, um, uh, I, mean, I forgot, but it's the uh, trail, Palihua Trail. So these were all the important trails, and this trail system here, which went on all the way out to Waianae, was later became basically Farrington Highway. So the trails uh, all established the development, early development of, of the uh, population at the time. Uh, in this map, what we are showing here is the Eva Plantation, and what's interesting about it is that the plantation, which was developed in the 1890s, really around 1880s, um, again followed the pattern of the trails. And this this was one of the points we were making about why the trails were important. They pretty much laid a template out of the whole future development of everything today and why everything is where it is today and the roads and everything. Um, it's all because of the original trail that emanated from Honolulu, which was the population epicenter and all basically, like to say about Rome, all roads led to Hona Uli Uli. Um, if this although rapidly began to change once the population died off and then everybody moved over to uh, Ko, which was there became known as Honolulu. But this was the epicenter, and this is where the blonde went, and this is they walked up the hills to do all the trail mapping. Palihua, the Eva Villages is where it is because it was at the junction of the two important trails. Uh, Habush, Oniwala, and Kualakai. So all these things developed the way they did because of the early trails, so they were very important. This is showing the trails overlaid on a Google Earth map. Um, we've gone out with um, uh, uh, Aaron, uh, I forget his name. No, uh, the, the trails guy for the... Uh, uh, the Trails. The Highland Trails. And we went in uh, his truck all the way over, and we covered we covered all the tra original trails in his four-wheel drive. And um, the amazing thing is, a great deal of these trail routes still exist today. They're actually are walkable today. Uh, they have never been most of them have never been covered over. So it's a really unique feature we would like to see preserved. That this trail system still can be preserved and still exists. We would exist. like Hawaiians to walk it for the health of the Hawaiian people. 
you know, that's important because this is not New York. This is Hawaii. Mm -hmm. yeah? And with all this <coughs> development, what, what Kane Healy Cultural Hui in this area wants to have a cultural park, a Hawaiian cultural park for all the history that came, a Hawaiian history, and then later on you have, uh, you know, what John is, the, you have the Kahapaho trails, and then you have the, the plantation era and whatever. What is, is, so let it be and protect it, because otherwise we're just gonna be chock-a-block full of houses, mm -hmm. and this is gonna be, what, California, mm -hmm. you know, LA, one of the things you notice too, and why we have this petition going around, is this happens to be one of the last open areas in the entire area because it was part of uh, the Naval Air Station Barber's Point, and because of the way the military developed things, most of it went to the west side where the Naval Air Station was built. And the original uh, MCS EVA, which we've got on the register uh, as protected area, and all the land below it is all part of a. There's a tremendous number of cultural sites here and willy willy trees and uh, rare native plants and animals most people don't know about and we would like to see most of this land preserved and there is a good chance that some of it could be the fish and wildlife is interested in preserving a, a larger cocoa area um, and down below is where Orty Pond is down here so we think this is a very important that's why we have the name uh, Mike came up with this Kanahili because this is where Kanahili original name is so we, we think this is a very important sacred area for us folks out of here at EVA. Um, and this is uh, the trail system. The one that um, Rashad Connie has down there, Kalilo Heritage Park, this is a good example of what's there. But uh, you will find all of this along the road further up on the uh, EVA, uh, EVA field side. There's trail systems back there. Uh, it's documented by the same reports that I know Shad has read uh, by the Tuggles and so forth, but this was the, one of the better <coughs> preserved trails today, but the trails do exist further up uh, on the other side, and you'll find plenty of these sinkholes and caves as well out there that most people don't know about that are there, and, and there are burials in there, um, and it's registered shifty sites and so forth as, uh, as that. Um, the, or the original EVA field was built because in 1925 they wanted to bring airships out to uh, Hawaii and so they built this big, what they called a mooring mast, it was a big round circle, uh, but prior to then it had been a sisal plantation and uh, there were at that time still evidence of the ancient trails running through there. And uh, later on we'll have more about that, but again this is what the uh, Tuggles have shown in their uh, important maps. They did some great archaeological research. Uh, it's not complete, but they did some of the best. Uh, in fact, there's a book called The Synthesis of the Eva Plain. Again, I know Shat's read the whole book cover to cover, and it's, it's, and it's not a widely something you can find. It's, it's through actually a Navy publication. You have to know the right places to get see it, and only certain people can actually see this publication. It's very important. It contains a lot of valuable information that most people don't know about that documents all these things. And by the way, I have sources for Navy documents and I can tell you there are many other important things that they intentionally keep hidden from everybody. There are TCPs identified and they have these documents and they keep them what's called draft form so they can't be FOIA'd. And they reveal tremendous information that's basically <coughs> kept secret from all you folks out there that everyone should know about. But we have sources to get some of these and I know um, Kai Markell's had some of these documents he's been able to see. Or the trails back there, we see them back there. We've seen rare native plants back there. Um, the the willy, willy trees, there's a lot more back there that people don't know about. The, uh, there's a large rock wall system, and it's right by Fair, uh, Roosevelt Avenue, and you would never even notice it's right by warehouses. But you can, <coughs> this spot, fortunately, has never been developed, and I have, I have always wondered why, I think because and this is something that uh, somebody, when they were building the base out there, said, leave this place alone. So they never touched it. And uh, it's, there's strong evidence that the wall that was there, probably later for cattle, uh, was all these uh, uh, karst uh, sections were actually part of the original trail that went through because it matches very much like you see down further south where uh, the Kalilo Heritage Park is. And this is where the Tuggles also say this is where the trail went. So. There's a lot of evidence of further uh, trails that uh, we're trying to see protected and 
in this land transfer that's going on now. Um, we did a lot of this with because with heart in mind and to show that the APE or area of potential effect was infected affected by in fact the trails and the lane and so forth. Uh, that it gets into technicality of that. When the plantation came about, they used these same trails and they became known as Pipeline Road and Palihua Trail and Mango Tree and so forth, but these are the original trails of Hona Uli Uli uh, that radiated out. This was a, a nice painting someone did um, back in the 50s, I think. Um, it shows, it gives you a good view of what the whole area looked like from just Eva Village at a plantation, and again, the trail systems going off to the different places. Um, this is a, a section up in Makakilo, and uh, Makakilo was um, also known as the, uh, it was like a kahuna place as well. It was all seeing, I forget the exact meaning of <coughs> Makakilo, but it basically means all seeing eyes or something. To see it clearly. Yeah. And so, and the trails run back up in here. They still exist. And it's underwood trees. There's willy willy trees. So we believe, I mean, we know this is the other part of the section. All this has been sort of wiped out by the development, plantation, and all that. But these, these things can be found down in Kanahili, uh, where Eva Field is, the same remnants. So you have two ends of a system that worked, was totally all like this in ancient times. So, uh, I, is that for I, I, And this is actually more of that area back in there. There's a Waihuna hidden spring that was um, revealed back there, uh, Kalai Gulch, uh, which is our main water system, and Mike's very familiar with that. Uh, we see the owls back there, and we saw the uh, whale that showed up in the September at the full moon. Uh, and we think that's an important uh, spiritual sign, that that bird was suddenly there. Palihua Trail, uh, Palihua Road, Pu'o uh, Makakilo, this is a view from the trails high up. Um, uh, it shows you when there were, this was a lookout place, so when, uh, if there was an invasion force coming in, this is the first place they would see it and put out the alert to everybody. Uh, so uh, this is where Hart crosses the, uh, the trails and uh, the area, we still have a case pending on that. These are hard. We use well, actually a lot of this is heart documents, and that's the amazing thing is, heart actually had people document all this, mm -hmm. and then they conveniently forgot about it. Yeah, it just gets buried. It. It's only because we go back in and dig it up and say, "Hey, your own documents show all this stuff." <coughs> uh, the Navy, same thing. They just hide all this stuff. They just hope nobody sees it. Um, these are the rail stations, and this is our big concern: is that they're not just putting in rail. If they were just putting in rail, okay people need to get some place, but this rail causes these giant TODs that are half a mile radius. And so really that's the whole point of the rail. They're developing all this farmland to become houses. So it's not about people getting some place to go downtown, it's about developing property. Yeah, what, it, what this is is a hub spying approach from the airport, which they do in China. And what they do is, this is for mortgages from Del Bartier, First Hawaiian Bank. This is for 30 years of mortgages. And the master plan is with the um, Hawaii State Democratic Machine. This is the gimme to all the unions for Freemasons, carpenters, for 30 years of developing 130,000 houses out here for a bedroom community that where Second City that was promised out here. You know, you're gonna take away all the A-grade food sustain. We're down to 10% of growing our own food, not 30, 10. And um, <clears throat> they're gonna take all of this away. Exactly. For, to, to maintenance the rail, and if that story came out, that's what they are expecting, yeah. there'll be a worse fear. So yeah. that's really quiet. Okay. That's all the property. Tax BAP keys are how the city <coughs> and the state make the, the, basically the city make their money. <coughs> so their investment is to get more money to stay in office by giving the givings to the unions. And that's what the TODs are all about, with the Bartier and the banks and everything. So it creates more cash revenue at the expense of food sustainability. And the first, uh, first line bank, I don't want to say too much, but the first line bank is, has been the long run in this because that's the power behind the... Uh, it's the power behind the unions and stuff because um, the rail, that is the, the actual rail cars, 
are a subsidiary of the Bartier, the mm -hmm. French company oh in Belgium, because because Japan has made orders um, through Thailand for theirs. So you see that this is all being funneled uh, incestuously by the Bartier, who basically picks uh, some of the people on Queen Lilio Queen Lilio Kalani Trust that's okay by the Democratic House and Senate and all of this to make their dreams come true. All the Hawaiian trusts, all the board of trustees are under the Democratic Party, faithful, loyal members, so that when they make their votes, they're not action, actually acting as fiduciary. They're acting, they're acting as if the trust was for them, their own mm -hmm. little private trust. Mm -hmm. They're not the beneficiaries or the heirs. Yet they act both sides, that I'm the heir, and I'm the beneficiary, I'm, and I'm the fiduciary. And so all of this is for development, building, union jobs, and all of this stuff. Now, you know, at what price? Hong Kong, with 7 million people, does not build on their farmland, okay? Mm -hmm. This is insane, okay? So, well, we'll continue. Which does bring <coughs> my, my comment. Yeah. Plus, they're going to pay again when the rail is built because people are going to have paid to ride on it. It's going to be the you second, know, gonna be the second largest sucker upper of electricity, <laughs> which they they're not putting um, solar to take care of the needs. It's mm -hmm. going to be one of the biggest consumers of energy on the island. Number two, so this is a real bad deal. They could have done what um, Disney World did with the little snaky uh, monorail. You know, mm -hmm. you just need like a telephone pole thingy. Mm -hmm. You just snake around. But why snake around when you can get the big ticket item? You know, and spread the money around because mm -hmm. they've had people trying to figure out where's the money going for the last two years and they can't. Mm -hmm. And by the way, any Kanaka who puts familiar? an obstacle in their way, they buy them off and just put them on the payroll and there goes any yak yak. Yeah, it's true. I've seen it happen. Oh, yeah. And in the Kako meetings, then they show up and I'm going, uh, excuse me, conflict of interest. Aren't you getting paid by the thing that you're trying to pretend? Mm -hmm. I don't think this is like seeing clearly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Back, back. Yes. No. Okay. So, um, so this is this section's on the uh, farmland, but it starts off just explaining, because we did this for the hard board meeting people, explaining that this is how the volcano it becomes, uh, it gets a karst reef around it, and it just happens that the south shore of Oahu, and this is supported by other UH studies, the south shore tends to accumulate the largest amount of reef, and so with higher sea levels and lower sea levels over time, the reef builds up, and the reef uh, at, uh, out in Eva is about a um, thousand feet down by the shore, and then tapers up to the side of the Wai uh, Waianae volcano. Um, so it's, and again, the sea level's gone up and down, but this is how you find cars in certain places, and there's some like Kahuku and Ma Mokapu and different places. Um, this is what the reef looked like uh, without any trail or rail or anything on it. It's not looking like this anymore, I'm afraid. Um, it's all coral. Uh, Opaiula live underground throughout this entire area. Um, you've, some people have had these as pets, and you can put them in a jar and seal it up and for five years they just self-sustain themselves. So they actually can live underground way back in deep caves under uh, with fresh small amount of fresh water. And so we've checked a lot of caves out. This shows the uh, ancient coral reef as documented by various uh, city and state sources, the Avacars and the alluviated soil, uh, which was <coughs> the farmland uh, by the plantation. Um, the, all the buildings in the early days were all made out of uh, coral blocks. And so uh, this is what it looks like at Neva, and this is Kauaiha Church, and Yolai Palace, and the, and the, uh, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the armory. Yeah, the, okay. uh, the, at this area, the burial, the ancient burial, <laughs> part of the Kaha, uh, yeah. it's part of the um, cave system below. Oh, yes. Yeah, this is part of the, the cave system. Yeah. yeah, on a cave system. Mike, right, what is the picture to the left on the bottom? Is that the wall? And and see they have the spring there. That's why again, like Mike said about why you'll find uh, these springs are all throughout Honolulu, all of Honolulu being karst has lots of underground caves and water systems. And that's why you had all these early springs that people could 
when they first moved there could uh, mm -hmm. put dig a hole just 12 feet down and have plenty of water. Yeah, one of the examples in 1992, uh, Richard Street and Bishop Street and King Street, the old First Hawaiian Bank building was taken down, boom, in an implosion. During the summer, they cleared all of that rubble and they, had, they were digging for the foundation. They couldn't find a bottom. They couldn't find a bottom. Oh, wow. On the 1810 map, there was a fish pond there. Okay? This eating underneath in the cave system was under there. They couldn't oh, find a bottom. Yeah. They had to pour liquid concrete for six months to create a foundation. The question is, why was that Carlsbad Cavern cave there in the first place? And what function did it do for tens of thousands of years? They kept it secret from everybody. I know because my dad was on the board of trustees <coughs> the first to wind back. So, you know, they got away with it. But I kept on bringing to the rail for the last five meetings. There were two other fish ponds, and they are Makai, where you're going to build your rail. What happens if you dig there and you don't find a bottom? Mm -hmm. Okay? You're going to pour six months of concrete? Well, ah, okay. <laughs> We're not going to let that happen. Like that okay? Image. But that's an informed public can make informed decisions. Yeah. Okie doke. Mm. And um, yeah, this shows how a car system works at the various, and th by the way, cars are all over the world. And um, the word cars actually is a German word uh, because there's cars in Europe, there's cars in off uh, South Carolina, there's Kentucky, or, uh, a lot of the U.S. mainland has car systems, and uh, the uh, and these caves that we're not, the size of caves could be huge because in Vietnam, just in the past ten years, in National Geographic, they've shown these caves to be large enough you could fly a Boeing 747 through. Them. I mean, they're that big; they're monstrously huge on the wow. Carl uh, caves. So this is how they work. There's sinkholes, there's springs, land, uh, different ver versions of it. Uh, these cars are created because uh, fresh water and rainwater is acidic. It, it basically uh, uh, basically melts our, uh, uh, the water, creates these caverns and so forth. It eventually flows out to the ocean, and this is why, and I think I've got a slide here, where off the Eva shore you can see these gigantic uh, round holes in Bahamas, they call them blue holes. Uh, they're fa fantastic swimming and fishing places, and that's why in ancient Hawaiian times the fish were just like crazy out there because they, they actually need the fresh water, and, and as Uncle Henry would tell you, that, that's the whole reason you create your limu, which creates the entire ecosystem that all the other turtles and fish and everything thrive on. And if you don't have that ecosystem, everything dies off. So the fresh water is extremely important. And Uncle Henry's here in spirit. When we got out of the parking lot, he was walking in with us. Yeah. It's right here. Um, we've gone to a lot of places to document caves. There's, this is a cave. It's right, in fact, where the DHHL D. Bartolo Shopping Center is going in. And you can actually identify mm -hmm. the type of coral. It's still that's unbelievable that it still has the color of uh, offshore coral. And yeah, this is a cave. Uh, this is another cave showing where the fresh water is running through. And this is all the green moss. And in the way, rainy seasons we've had, these things you could go out there and see water running through them and you can hear the water running underground. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the Opai Ula down there. This is a part of a nice preserve that the Fisher Wildlife has done. Um, and there's just tons of shrimp out there. And they don't have to even stock them. The shrimp just show up because once you dig the hole, uh, they're already there. And they just occupy the area. Um, we've had documented lots of wildlife in these areas. This particular shot is actually on Maui, but um, this is what the area would have looked like in the ancient times. Kalo'i Gulch means uh, mm -hmm. the uh, Lo'i Waterway or what mm -hmm. Lo'i area, so the name tells you what the people are doing there. Mm -hmm. um, Carol Cox, who's a well-known local environmentalist, he shot these pictures. He's got a nice camera. And these are just a few of the many uh, migratory water birds that come through out this, in this same area uh, where Ho'opili is. Again, none of these people will admit that all these migratory birds come through or that there's uh, poyos living out there or any of that stuff. Um, here we go. This is offshore of Avacos. This is um, mm -hmm. Oniula over here in this area. Um, but this is one of the huge uh, of many mm -hmm. holes where the fresh water was coming out for uh, thousands of years. And these fresh water places were just fabulous uh, fishing sp spots because the fish would just all hang out in this area and eat the uh, lingo and so, so forth. So this was an entire ecosystem, but it's unfortunately being choked off because the more they develop, 
and they fill up concrete in these holes, they're cutting off all this fresh water that normally comes down here. Um, and this is where we were making the argument with Hope Healy and uh, Keone Dudley about the fact that, um, you know, they say the city wants to change the designation to uh, urban from agriculture, and this is why we're still waiting for the Hawaii Supreme Court, we hope, will rule in favor uh, against Hope Healy because this was already identified as a port agri agricultural land, and it was such going back to the 70s. We've researched all of this. The maps are there, and this was all shown as prime and unique ag land for a very long time, and it was only in the last couple of years that the city changed the designation. And um, in fact, they're still waiting on the Supreme Court ruling. It hasn't happened yet. Another prime ag map. This is another version of it, LSB classification. So this is why the area was inhabited by a very large native Hawaiian population, Hona Uli Uli, and why it supported it was the breadbasket for the entire island of Oahu, because this is a super rich place. It had tons of water, tons of springs, very rich volcanic soil from the Waianae volcano. It was everything you could ask for. It had an ideal climate, uh, and so that's why, unfortunately, we're now destroying this ideal growing place. A lot of light, you can get six harvests from this area because it, it's got the light. It's, the clouds are at the mountainside <coughs> of the Ko'olaus, and that this whole area, the more light you have, the faster the growing. This shows the uh, Eva Plantation and why it, Eva Plantation became the richest, most profitable plantation in the entire history of the Hawaiian Islands. And they had their own huge railway system. It was extremely profitable. And it was one of the few, in fact, where the local uh, workers, the Japanese and the Filipinos and Koreans they brought in, actually were relatively taken care of compared to other plantations because they made so much money here. And these are kids taken going out to, um, uh, to think of where was the uh, uh, Campbell's uh, camp? No, I'm, I'm, I'm lost. Really, but it's today uh, the camp Irvin. Well, it's the um, mm -hmm. it's where they have all the weddings and stuff out by only uh, by uh, Koalina Paradise Cove, and but they're Hawaiian Koalina. 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 Yeah, that where she had that was her home. She and she she oh. loved that place. So. Yeah. Kamakila Campbell. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, there's pictures of the uh, kids going out there. This is the water system which still exists out there. This mm -hmm. is another case we've made that um, you know this whole area. Mm -hmm. Uh, of Ho'opili remains totally in production with agriculture and has full everything you can want. There's power there, there's water there, and again, you could not find a more ideal agricultural place where they have to go off and they're going to create new ones and spend millions of dollars to uh, try to bring in water and different things, and it's going to cause all the people that grow stuff to have to go much further to their markets, whereas right here at this area at Ho'opili, you just go right on the H1 and you go right to your markets. I mean, they serve all the uh, restaurants and Polina or Safeway or Foodland or whatever. It's an ideal place and it's all turnkey working now. Is there any way to stop it? Yeah, I heard the Sierra Club has a lawsuit. It's the Hawaii Supreme Court. If the Hawaii it's Supreme the Court were to rule that uh, <coughs> this was important agric agricultural land and you can't convert it to urban, that would change everything. So we're still waiting for that to happen. And that's in there's, a, there's another case going on from Kahoma, West Maui land mm -hmm. for 16 acres, and it's going to go to the state Supreme Court. And in the Land Use Commission, we were in that case, and the Land Use Commission agreed we stop that development. It was C-graded land, okay, C, not A, and it hadn't been used for 35 years in Lahaina. And what the Attorney General said, you have to change your vote against Mr. Lee because if you don't, Ho'opili will fall. The ruling is not balanced. Ho'opili is A. Mr. Lee was in that case with you guys, made the same argument, and it's continuous use. And yet for a C-graded land that hasn't been used in 35 years, you will stop it based on what he brought to the table. It's not weighted, it'll fall. Now that one is going, that's the only backup that's going to the State Supreme Court. That's the one next to Lahaina Cannery Mall. Yeah, yeah. And I heard the Sierra Club has a lawsuit saying that the, uh, the Kunia farmers um, are suing on land ownership, saying that the um, what was sold 
was not actually real estate. It was a that is correct. Yeah, it's it's not security, real estate. Um, and therefore Those were it's an unfinanceable. Yeah. It's an unfinanceable interest. Those were leases from the state, and then they're <laughs> acting as if it's private property. <laughs> Ninety-nine mm -hmm. le leases, but they're trying to pretend it's fee simple. So that is a good case, and that could we'll see stop. what happens. Yeah. yeah, we'll see what happens. This is again Hope Healy, and uh, we've hiked and driven and uh, walked all through this area, and it's unimaginable how big this area is to see all the plants. It's unimaginable to think that they're going to cover every single bit of this in roads and houses. They're going to take away that soil because mm -hmm. it, they can't put buildings on that soil. So all that A-grade world-class soil is going to be moved. It's yeah. like chocolate mousse. It's so rich oh, yeah. that you can't build on it. You have to remove it. You have yeah. to put coral on top of it. There's a class at, at UH called Understanding Hawaii Soils, and it says that is the best soil in the, in the entire world. state of yeah, Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. This is um, just showing you some historic maps, the Honoli'oli Taro Lands that used to lay gulch and everything was part of. Um, and more of this shows developed plantation. Again, later maps and air photos. This shows the route. Again, a lot of this stuff is, comes from the Hart or Hope Peely's own um, data. I mean, the, the, this is, we didn't have to make up all the stuff. It was already there. We're just showing people. Mm -hmm. uh, this shows that the, uh, this is a Google Earth shot, but it shows that basically the entire original plantation of Eva largely still exists with the actual parcel fields. So there's actually signs still have the old numbers. They go back to the 1939 map that we showed earlier. So it's all still there. That's the ironic thing, the plantation fields. And it's just that the, today they grow tomatoes and, you know, chives and you know, onions and pine, uh, uh, pumpkins and melons, whatever. They grow everything out there. It's a really amazing place. And this is from the uh, Port Nag land mapping stuff. And it just shows why if you apply the criteria to land out there, it meets virtually every single criteria except for one, which is that if the government can come in and say it's not what it is, then that's the only criteria it doesn't meet. That's the city. So other than that, it meets everything. This is some, an issue, too, where we took um, the hard people out and showed them this thing. This is a huge pile. This is all the dirt coming out of the holes back there. And uh, we have argued that they, um, if they had done a decent search through this stuff, they would very likely find something in here, including possibly Evie, because... Uh, It'd be next to impossible to dig all the stuff and dirt back here and, and dump it there. They, they claim yeah. nothing yeah. was ever found. See, the section one where Ho'opili basically had the largest concentration of Hawaiians ever, mm -hmm. they <clears throat> didn't want to do, they didn't want to have cultural monitors. Right. And the, the cultural monitors are for the first three feet. So the last dump is like the 60, 80 foot. So the first three feet is under there. So. With our complaint, they all went out there and looked at the bottom 80 feet, which is now the surface. And they, no, we can't see anything. You know, this is this is a crime that to our culture that they should have had cultural monitors. You know, for a 10 billion dollar thing, they cannot afford it. You give me a break. Mm -hmm. You know, you couldn't afford to protect our Ivikupuna. So, you know, this has been very hard for us. So, yeah. More the TODs and, and again this mm -hmm. this red outline shows the area but APE which is again a legally uh, area of uh, effect and again Hart starts to claim no it's not we're just uh, looking at small areas they so uh, go against everything that their original reports say and they claim everything we say is just bogus and not, not important um, so you know if anybody Hawaiians who feel like they've been lied to a lot well we've seen it all ourselves at these meetings. Um, this is what the whole area is going to look like, all being redeveloped, and this is Kalei Gulch. By the way, this is the spot in here that is a DLR property. That, that, that's why we think Colton Chang wanted to become the DLR guy, because Castle really wants this mm -hmm. property. And it could still be sold off, and it would be the last. This is where the Red Lehua is currently. They want that property in the Lehua. Mm -hmm. oh, money. Money. And uh, the people, people that they are owns Hopili, they're going to sell this shopping center spot here for, I think it was like $75 million, and that's about what they paid for all of this. So they make instant profit, just like Hunt with this uh, land development the Navy's doing. 
uh, the minute Hunt gets that property, they can make uh, five to ten times the amount. In fact, if we don't think they even paid for it. That's a whole other story. It's one of the biggest mm -hmm. scams of all time that people don't know about. What they did was they did, Hunt Development did a project for the Navy. The Navy didn't want to pay them cash. They did a swap transfer of land, 600 acres, that didn't belong to the Navy in the first place. In 1931, mm -hmm. executive order, Mika Hela Kikau Onoi, 43,000 acres. Her descendants are still around. And they didn't, yeah, as you know about the land issues, give a rat's behind. Yeah. Uh, this was list the last thing. This was just to show uh, when we got to the point of the end of the battlefield, how it operated and stuff. But this has been since nominated to the state register and is headed to the national register. Um, that would preserve hopefully about 170 acres. And this um, is important because we hope to also designate a second layer on top of, see, the battlefield's a sacred place because. Uh, men died in combat there, but we also argue it's also a sacred place because it's part of the Lena as identified in the heart document. So let's put the second Hawaiian layer on top and make it a double sacred place for everybody. And that's part of what our petition is about. We were asking you to sign is we're telling the Navy uh, you should be consulted on this because you have, it's an important cultural or religious site to people and you should have an input on it. And John's a veteran, and they brought out all the stops to fight him for this. The old Navy site. They didn't want it to happen. They spread rumors about John to 86, his plans to protect the Navy's first battle site. Because in Ebba Field, the battle started there before Pearl Harbor. John worked eight years, and when they tried to block him here under Danny Noy, and all Hunt, and all these backroom deals and stuff like that, John reached out to the rest of the country because they put a wall over here, tried to sink his reputation and everything. He went to the rest of the country. And then we finally, Connie Hilligui, John did this, uh, got the state to represent it and pass it on to the federal government. Yet they still could 86 this whole thing by doing a last minute Christmas vacation thing and signing it over to Hunt Development. Then the landowner says, I don't want it. You know? And this is the Navy doing it against their people that sacrificed and died. There is no morals here. There is no soul here. And we're talking about the lane and the souls. Hello. So um, that's the end of that one. And there's even more, but I know how much more patience people have for even more. There's another TCP report and so forth, but um, it's up to what people want to look at. Any question? As you can see, this is the repeat of everything you've seen and heard, mm -hmm. but really peel out really peel off. It's worse and worse. It's worse than people ever could imagine. Mm -hmm. And the city city council that passed this stuff, they're talking it's cheaper if they stop now and just use what they have. They go over for $10 billion mm -hmm. of overruns. The first question I say is for the rail, when have you seen a rail go under $10 billion anywhere in the country? Oh. You know, they give it the soft sell for five and it ends up over budgeted over delayed and everything. There is no rail in the United States that went under budget, on time, never. And yet you expect this one to go with all the stuff. So this is bad news. And here they had these meetings telling people what TCPs were and if they're important to you, uh, we'll respect that. And here we are, we go to these meetings and we bring up the TCPs and they tell us get lost, you know. We don't want to hear about your TCPs. So. Tell them who we're petitioning, um, we're, we're FTA does not want to hear what we have. They've shut down the CAPCO meetings. It looks like almost indefinitely. It's against the law because that's what the, the um, uh, programmatic agreement said. This was a due process on our side to bring our concerns, and they've shut it down because we're threatening them like crazy with their own documents. How's about that? You know? So um, it's, it's not good. Not good. So when you speak about your transfer, then maybe to hard. To hunt. To a hunt development, 600 for, acres. For Hart. For Hunt. So yeah, there's two Hunt. things going Hunt. on Hart has an easement, okay, and then you have Po'o mm -hmm. that owns part of Kolo'i Yeah. So they all intersect in this zone, you know, of traditional Hawaiian uh, culture sites, cultural <coughs> sites. And what we're trying to do is, the best we can do now is go to the federal government in the fishery service, because they're supposed to obey federal law. Mm -hmm. And in all of their EISs, mm -hmm. they're supposed to talk to the fisheries because mm -hmm. those laws protect our Hawaiian stilt, the Hawaiian dock, 
and many of the Vili Vili trees in flora and fauna. They don't want to go there, okay? We worked in Wailea 670 for the Goodfellows project of 600 acres in Kihei, Maui, sued them, and then what we did was they wanted 46 acres of preservation for the dry land Vili Vili service. We said, no way. We bumped it up to 180 and then had the developer put $10 million in a trust to take care of that land and to incorporate the Hawaiian culture in that, not just for birds and mm -hmm. flora and fauna, mm -hmm. but the, the Hawaiian people. culture, boom, mm -hmm. in those zones as well, access to all of that. That's the first model that was ever done with the fisheries, because they can find these guys huge amount of money if they don't have a preservation plan. So where's the preservation plan for yeah. hunt development, rail, ho'opili, for these cultures, for the pueo out, and that's what our um, Kanehili Hui is working on next to secure all of these Hawaiian birds and plants and, and, and things in the federal government. You see, um, the state, HCDA, locks it out, gives them exemptions in state laws, but they can't get around federal laws. So that's where we can nail them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any questions? I know we're, we're at the, the two hour mark of 720, and this is a lot, this is a big dump. Of is, information, yes. Is Hunt a contractor of the military? They are a developer. land developer who pretty much preys on the government's uh, excess land, mm -hmm. and they're experts at getting it, their hands is on it. it. Excess in quotes because it's not really. It's not they think dollars. it's excess, but it's ours. Yeah. yeah. Because of uh, because of Pearl Harbor, of course, the Navy went out and just grabbed everything and yeah. threw all the farmers off the land, and then after the uh, finally. Uh, we're at the point where they don't need all this stuff. And they're sitting still on tons of land out in Westlock. So they just started handing it out to lines. people like Hunt. Well, Moko Ume Ume belonged to Mikahela Kikau Nohe and all the fishing rights mm -hmm. to the west. Mm -hmm. Queen Kalama had all the fishing rights to Halaba East for her royal patents, yeah? So Ford Island belongs to the relatives of Miriam Kikau Onohe. Mm -hmm. And then the Damon estate came in 1876 and cockroached that land, did a survey and said, mines, you know? So it doesn't belong to the Navy. Yeah. It still belongs to the Hawaiians, but you have to process your genealogies, your papers, so the Bureau of Conveyances, you have to get vested, you have to put it in a draft to keep out. American patents are different from Mahele patents. They're founded on Blackstone. Ours is founded on Bouvier, third edition, 1854. So how we set up ours is different from theirs. They always like to come in and talk about theirs because it has nothing to do with ours. So you have to put in a legal instrument called a giraffe and say, my little playpen is different than yours and you just play in mine, okay? Because mm -hmm. yours is different. Mm -hmm. So you love to use yours, but yours isn't ours, okay? So says the treaty between President Polk in 1850 and Commandment III, all the allodium resides in his lap, 4,200,000 acres, okay? That's why there's no meets and bounds in the Admissions Act. The Admissions Act was an act, it was an executive order, okay? That's why we're still occupied. And Article 1, Section 1 of the Admissions Act, try and find it. We get this land from, hmm? where? Where did you get the land? Who gave you the authority? It says, we get this land in Article 1, Section 1, you cannot find it. Yeah. Because it doesn't exist. Yeah. it's fictitious. Yeah. They didn't get it from, there was no treaty of annexation, Newland's resolution doesn't have the power of the supremacy clause of uh, section six, article, article six, section two of the constitution, and it was only for uh, crown lands, not private lands. Okay, so unless you're in the weeds like a lawyer, snipping away at all this BS, you get, you get uh, Buffalo, they don't own the land. Okay. Any other questions? Um, the, yes. <clears throat> you mentioned the that the whatever developer. De Bartel. De Bartel. Oh yeah. Yeah. Can it be said that the they're kind of in bed with the HHL? Oh, oh first sure. of all, Bank has always been because in bed with who who picked who picked Eileen Anderson, chairman of the board of First Hawaiian Bank, mm -hmm. um, uh, Mr. Bellinger. That was his little puppet. Okay. Who. I was at a certain function where mm -hmm. one of the union leaders in 1983 said, oh, Johnny Bellinger never came. I guess I'm nothing. Okay. Who really ran 
So if you find out who really ran Hawaii in the 80s, okay, Al Shen was the godfather of the Democratic Party, okay? He was in the center of the web like the Lord said, okay? And he, he made billions for the unions, you know? The guy was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. But between Johnny Bellinger and the Al Shen, they ran Hawaii. You know, they ran the, the Westpac stuff that was going on, and the, Johnny Bellinger had the 200 Club, which no longer exists the minute mm -hmm. he died. And there were so many things that they ran. They ran the unions because they held the money. Look to the money, and you'll find out who runs everything. The brilliance of Al Shim, no question, one of the most brilliant men, as well as Johnny Bellinger, both Hawaiian. One, Johnny Bellinger was Kamehameha School graduate, I mean, uh, Al Shem, Kamehameha School graduate, and Johnny was the Roosevelt, you know? Brilliant men, Hawaiian, but what happened to the Hawaiians with these brilliant men? It didn't, it didn't help out Hawaiians. This architecture did not help out the Hawaiians. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's got to stop. We have to stop it, you know? Otherwise, everybody is at risk. Everybody who breathes and eats and drinks water is at risk here. You know. Tony King's supposed to be retired, but um, he made our case for us a couple of years ago when he said all these things were true that all the developers say aren't that, that water runs underground, that it was uh, used for agriculture. These are the history of the caves and springs. There's actually an excellent book that's done, uh, I can't remember his name, but there was a guy that mapped all these things out uh, a long time ago and, and to this very day it's a very very old book all the uh, hydrologists and people in the city and state water departments consider this the bible because this this book is this remarkable story of where all the springs and caves and everything are and that's where mike has done a lot yeah. of his research uh, point of note moku ula maui sacred island page 80 Sclophorius, s-c-r-o-f-u-l-o-u-s disease associated with the wrath of the moho <coughs> it ravaged Oahu and Maui from May to October 1853. In 1854, Kawikia Ouli was fatally ill. Kamehameha III does his best to kill himself with strong drink. Okay? This had, I mean, you never hear this stuff. You never hear it. It's in print. Go to Google search. Uh, it's in the, uh, when you go to foreign testimony, native testimony, foreign register, native register, under penalty of perjury, under sworn that you can get it certified, what you find out there is a total different history than what you're taught, you know. It's totally different. It's an eye-opener. And the history we know now keeps the status quo quo, and it doesn't empower Hawaiians. Kamehameha School does its best to um, teach Hawaiians, but not teach Hawaiians Hawaiian to empower them. Hawaiians that come out of there are Pua'ayu, the shutdown artist, and all these mm -hmm. people that do the first thing to shut down our culture in mass, in mass. And they feel that Kamehameha Schools is the only benefit they have when the whole island and all of the islands are theirs. And I, I scratch my head and say, you know, you should do your own research independently to see what the true history is. Because someone who steals your car and is a thief and you complain and they give you the cigarette lighter and say, shut up. They're still a thief and you still didn't get your card even though the Mahele documents say you're the owner. And I'll tell you one more thing, Article 1, Section 1 of the fake state, okay? It says we have the power to make laws in this fake state from the people. Oh, wonderful, what people? From France, <coughs> from Oklahoma, Show me the pala pala that shows that they have the land. Can you go to France and make laws in France? Can you go to Germany and say, hey, I'm going to make laws because I'm here. I'm the people. No. The native tenants have allodial lands, which is higher than freehold fee simple, that go on forever. Once they die, it's called inure. Their interest goes to their children. And they now have it, but you have to quit claim and quiet title it, which no one taught them the rules and regs. No one knew the portfolio of grandpa's stuff. They all thought fee simple and allodial was one and the same. It's not. Even certain professors which <laughs> go to wherever don't even know that. And they got their professorship off of whatever, because they don't know it's Bouvier and not Blackstone. You got to get into the weeds. 
to light up the Christmas tree. I'm being kind, okay? <laughs> I'm not here to smack our Kanakas, but smack them I will without using their names so that they don't look stupid, but that's a stupid thing to do, okay? <laughs> but um, you have to know what's in play in operation. And, um, you know, anybody who's Kanaka, you, you want to take off into outer space when you find out I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you one. This is going to kill you when I tell you, because I've got research on this. How did the missionaries, Castle and Crook, how did they come here and from the commission of the board of New England whatever, get all this land, fine, from Kamehameha III, the old guy, not the young kid, Iao Kuni. How did they get so rich? Okay. I'll tell you how they got so rich. This is the pattern and model of success for them. After they came here, they saw this land, they saw the Maheli, and they took down the names of all the big landowner Kanakas. I'm talking 91,000 acres, okay? And what happened to them when all of these smallpox diseases came in 1853 and was annihilating them, which by the way, they had vaccines, but they only gave it to the king because they wanted the chiefs to die. Why? Why? Because they took over their children's interest in the land mm -hmm. and became mm -hmm. their legal their guardians and made a beeline to San Francisco, yes. mortgaged the land of 91,000 acres at $10 an acre, which we're talking in millions, which is billions back then, okay? And then they spend all that money or they do what is called, they come back here in the Bureau of Conveyment, Conveyance and then they start doing a assessment where they're putting up all this money, and where is it coming from? And Kalakaua, who builds Iolani Palace that goes into bankruptcy, gets Claus Spreckles and this cabal of, of uh, <coughs> plantation guys to do this assignment of all this money, and the root of all this money is Kanaka lands from Kanaka children, because these guys took over the lands by being the legal guardian, and they spread mm -hmm. the word of how to do it. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't their money, it was Kanaka children's money, and then they dump them after they get all the men, the land, including uh, Bernice Power Bishop's husband. You know, so this is, I mean, when you find, I have all the certified documents because this same group puts down for the 91,000 acres in a royal patent. And I saw the original royal patent, and I said, there's something wrong with this royal patent. It's dated the day after Kamehameha V died, and it says Kamehameha for Kamehameha V, and it, it didn't have Lot Kamehameha. He always put El Kamehameha, mm -hmm. or he put Kamehameha Rex. Mm -hmm. yeah, Only yeah. Lilio Kalani also did Kamehameha Rex. Mm -hmm. The rest didn't. And I'm going, this isn't in Kamehameha because he died a day before, came back to sign the paper and you know, went back, you know, the, you know, the first zombie king of Hawaii. And they have this document, you know? And so, when you find out this pilaf stuff, it makes you so angry, I tell you. You want to take off like a rocket. But that's how that happened. How, that's how these guys got all the money, you know, and then started doing this with each other. There's a little cabal of uh, these Freemasons and stuff, you, you know, that all got the there. same names as the executors mm -hmm. of, of all their the, wills right. and, their, and guardians of, right. their, of the children. Of the children. Yeah. That's, that's how they did it. So, see, this is the history you never hear. And it's all certified, by the way. I got it in this big treasure mm -hmm. chest of Pandora's box, I call it. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll drive you nuts when you go through it. Ugh. By the way, this is the mitigation. They want us to either do coloring books <gasps> or they have concrete columns oh, that thanks. show you. Here's, all, here's yeah. the Hawaiian history we yeah. are covering over in concrete. The yeah. tomb of Hawaiian history. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's that's a gift back to us. Yeah, back and at you, back at you. you know? There are still people that protest this. They don't get any news coverage. You rarely see this in the TV news because they don't want to report it. Because they all know they can get good jobs working for Caldwell or the state administration. So you have very few TV news reporters that want to do these stories. Yeah. Yeah. So the two years ago that they put in for the change of the zoning was just after the mayoral election, in which exactly. they bought off every election uh, you know what happens Cayetano. paper bags with cash you know or <laughs> or yeah paper bags with cash or you have a Bahamian island account just numbers you know who's checking who saw it where's the taxes eh, you know 
2.5 million for a vote, hey, that's a pretty good, you know, way to, how do these guys, like George Ariyoshi, you know, how do they get in yeah, with a 50 something thousand Ooh. salary, and then he's an attorney, and they become 100 millionaires with diamonds in their socks? I don't get it, you know, but it's not good. It's not right, it's not righteous, and it ain't good. So, any other questions? Where is the meeting on Wednesday night? Where is the meeting? Oh, this Navy meeting is actually a closed thing. Yeah. It's uh, Again. they have it with only the people they want to talk to, yeah. except <laughs> that. Uh, That's why you're taking the signature. This, is, this is the crime of all of this. Is because even us, okay, because they're on the Navy side, we who are the signed programmatic agreement uh, people Probably are barred from it. Base. We're barred from it. This is taxpayer money now, okay. This is not homeland security. Mm -hmm. This is not secret defense plans and stuff. Right. This is building a rail. Well, yeah. And the people who are paying for it are denied to have access to any this. of this. Well, On what, this is going to go to. What grounds do they bar you? How do they? Because well, this, this, we're talking about the Navy. The Navy, sorry. Now. The Navy. It's, they're, they're claiming that this is all this Orwellian 19, uh, 1984 stuff where uh, you had to be in back in 2001 when the Ford Island Agreement was made. Uh, to be able to comment today on the land transfer that's happening in 2015. Okay, and so this land transfer of 2015 is the Navy to Hunt? To Hunt. To Hunt. For yeah, Hunt Heart. Development, which is a tech for, fam uh, private uh, family uh, Texas corporation right. that makes tons of money, pays off all the politicians locally. Yeah. They, get all, they get massive amounts of land from the Navy because they have inside real estate deals. It's all worthy of big stories, but nobody will do it. This is and going so to go to. They're saying that you can't attend because you did not attend the original Ford Island Agreement. In 2001, we were not recognized parties because somehow we were supposed to go back in time to 2001 to become a recognized party, so we could comment on a, a transaction today, which, by the way, has since revealed the Lena Akahani and the Eva Battlefield, and and many more things that were not known in 2001. Right. So all these things that are important, they act like it doesn't exist. Yeah. Well, so who is Schofield Barrett? Okay, uh, there was a reporter that depleted uranium from, from uh, 1963 using grenades. They needed the heavy nets of the grain, depleted uranium there. Okay, the, the military did not check with the Nuclear Energy Commission. All of that was hushed up. The article didn't happen. You know, this is how business is done in Hawaii. And who does it affect with depleted uranium and stuff? We, the people who pay for all of this, the Navy, the ships, and everything, but we, the people, don't get access to know what's <laughs> going on to save ourselves that we're paying for. Mm -hmm. This is nuts. But this is the way the operating procedure of the land of chaos works here uh, in this corrupt uh, place that is, you know, open season for the carcass to feed on at the the true landowner's expense, which is the Hawaiian people, mm -hmm. you know. So you talk about a tipping point, you know. The more this gets out, the better, because there's facts to back up everything we say. Um, you know, nerve gas was being hid in the 70s um, below the caves, the karst caves by Pearl Harbor, by, you know, Waimalo and stuff. The governing Ariyoshi knew about it. Johnny Bellinger knew about it, okay. They weren't saying anything to we, the people, who are living under all of that gas, you know? So a lot of things are done, just like the nuclear weapons and stuff, and the Red Hill stuff, and all of this stuff, affect us directly. <clears throat> we, the biggest stakeholders for our own lives, and I thought a government's first job was to secure the security and safety of its people. Ah, ah. It's about money and cash flow, and paying off favors, you know? So. This, I mean, which is strictly, but we shut down the rail kakumu meeting, Kanihili Hui, because they don't want to deal with it. This is so toxic waste. And it's their own material. Uh, tell them about the Lena and Pua Ayu and Bill Isla and, you know, mm. what they said and wrote about the Lena. And then we got on tape um, Downer to say, yeah, I'd re federally recommend the Lena and stuff. And they have, the rail itself said, yes, this should be fair. And now they say, no, cannot be. That's why we're in this appeal. Everybody said yes, we come said, you said yes, they go, no. You know, amnesia, you know, some Korean drama here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, 
the operating procedure of Korean dramas. Well, I was going to say, this, why this is important is we do have one ray of hope, which is there's a, a, a group called the National Trust for Historic Preservation. They're actually quite powerful in D.C. They're actually chartered by Congress. There's a top attorney there who has been fighting for us, and this is going to be sent to her by Tuesday because she's going to meet with the Navy on Wednesday, and she's going to advocate for all of us that we have to be heard. So and this is an important lady. She has very high level contacts in D.C. with all the top people. So she can use this as ammunition to say, hey, there's a lot of people out here. You're not talking to Navy that have rights to be able to hurt. And she'll, she'll make a case for this. And she could go as far as potentially filing an injunction against the Navy on the land transfer. So this is really serious stuff that's happening. Would it be helpful to start a petition online to get That'd it here by Wednesday? Yeah, it wouldn't happen fast enough. That's why I wanted to do it tonight on this, yeah, because you folks much. are uh, either cultural <coughs> practitioners or interested in that area, and that's what's important to her to be able to right away <coughs> present this. Because, uh, yeah, the things are moving too yeah. quick, mm -hmm. quickly right now. So um, mm -hmm. she can use this as her ammunition to say that people, you're not listening to these people here. And so you, you've really contributed a lot to mm -hmm. Potentially like helping us win, win this sign case. Who, what? Sign holding outside we'll get it on the Navy base. You'll, you'll, you'll never. <laughs> 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 don't think so. Yeah. 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 Yes, Auntie. Um, at our Naval report, they brought out about the Red Hill and how the Board of Water Supply admitted that they, um, the military wants them to sign. A, a secrecy that whatever happens with the water and everything, that they'll um, not disclose. Uh, no, they will not disclose it to the public. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, out of everybody wow. over there, I was the only one turned around and stood up and says, um, "I support the board of water supply, but Macy, I support my family and my rights to know." You know, you know what I mean? And yet I was shocked because out of everybody mm -hmm. over there, no one yeah. ever spoke up about anything. You know, what is happening? I mean, everybody knows about the Love Canal, eh? mm -hmm. the town that's no longer there. All the contamination and people die, well, children. Auntie, out at, um, they have d toxic dump sites out at Kalailo. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are dump sites there that are so toxic the Navy, why didn't Hunt say clean it up before the transfer? And there's the Superfund, Love Canal. They don't even put it on the yeah. Superfund. And again, people who want to live there don't even know mm -hmm. that, yeah, that there's a toxic waste dump. John, you know where that toxic mm -hmm. waste dump is. You want to speak to that? Uh, <laughs> well, it's on the western side of Barbara's Point. There's a lot of things going on out there. Uh, I've tried to bring into attention the EPA and other people, and even they are told to shut up about it. There's powerful stuff going on they don't want people to know about. And these are the people assigned by the federal government to protect our needs are being shut down. This is, I mean, the scandal out here is like incredible. You know, and children, pregnant women, yeah. surfers, all of this indirect, direct, and cumulative impacts of this HEFA is so bad out here. And none of the politicians, I mean, we've written to the, the congressional uh, senators, Congress people, they just assign you a number and say bye-bye, mm -hmm. you know? So we do our due diligence with due care and due time. But on their side, I see nothing, I hear nothing, I know nothing, I speak nothing. Sergeant Schultz of Hogan's Heroes, you know? They just won't do anything, mm -hmm. you it's know? It's just like when uh, Carol Cox got hurt, like nothing crickets crickets you know and we the people our head is in the guillotine you know and at what point do people stop acting like sheep and say no you cannot pass arab spring right now right now you know what right do you have to do to violate all your laws and my right to life liberty and the pursuit of living which is kind of happiness if i'm alive you know Right. But that's what is happening systematically through this, this bad news bear stuff. 
Uh, for for certain elders, the Waianae, we have been um, gone through a lot of other things with the military, with the community, with the city, and with the state and everything. Uh, and I got to say, at least we came out shining no matter what. The truth will set you free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing I like to share to you I worked for about 27 years with the state. I recognize the city and know how they dump all of this stuff. I know every job site before they go on and what they can get out of it. I mean, just from there putting workers on there. But yet, it all gets cleared. Mm -hmm. They can take it all over there. That airport got more nuclear power than it based on the planet. Yeah. And we buried it there. Mm -hmm. And nobody knows. And the, the cumulative, direct, indirect, and cumulative health effects, when people's thyroid start to go and leukemia starts to go up, they don't know why, you know? And no agency here, federal, state, city, are doing their jobs. None of them. It's all about unions, big jobs, getting reelected, and the Bah Bahamian Island accounts outside of the taxes and everything. The truth. Sue me. I'm on disability. <laughs> you know. Yeah, concerned elders when under uh, homeless. Yeah. Yeah. Take away my nothing. Yeah. You know, I love to give it away. You got nothing. Yeah. Except time to harass the tiger. When's your next meeting, Mike? Oh, what's on the agenda for our <laughs> next meeting? Yeah, I, uh, a lot of it is to advance this, because you know what we need is patterns and models of successes. We did it at Wailea 670. We showed it could be done. That should be the minimum, not the maximum. Right now, mm -hmm. it's the maximum standard. We got practitioners, cultural descendants, Maui Meadows, anybody who cares to the table. And it has to happen through lawsuits, because the state won't follow the rule, the mm -hmm. laws, the city won't follow the laws. It has to go up to the Supreme Court because all the judges who want to be Supreme Court know that they have to bow to the system and say, no, we won't do, we won't look at the law, we won't look at the law, till it gets up to the state Supreme Court, 160,000 in it for life, and they don't have to be pressured. They do make decent rulings. But it's a game, it's a game, and it's very tiring for anybody who's been through the process. For me, Eva Marina was an eight-year schlag being my own attorney to the state Supreme Court. So we learned a lot in that process of shepherding it, you know. And the reason why we shut down the marina was because when we did our lawsuit to protect my grandmother in the, it was a losing case, we went to Native Legal Court and they said, hey, they're shrinking the marina. That's a good thing. I said, uh-uh. You don't know what the big picture is. The big picture is three reefs that protect us from tsunamis and hurricane high water coming in because all that energy is, is dissipated. The marina puts out a 60 foot deep channel, 75 feet wide. All the sand on the leeward coast is going to go into that deep channel and never come up. We're going to lose the sand forever, which feeds the limu with the fresh water. So we're going to lose the limu, we're going to lose our sand, and we're going to lose our fishery and you're gonna open a corridor for all the tsunamis to come in and blitz us. Okay, that's not a good thing, okay? Plus our Ivi Kupuna is right in the path. As soon as we filed the lawsuit and this eight year journey went, they lost their credit rating by the banks. See, this is the way we fought them. We went to their money supply. So the bank said to Haseko, what's your plan B if Mr. Lee prevails? They didn't have a plan B. They went, they went with their engineers and they did their research they found out they'd make $200 million more if they didn't have the marina. And that's what killed the marina. I went up to the Supreme Court and we knew it was a losing case. We just needed to get in and hold them off and threaten them long enough for their credit rating to go into the tank and come up with a different plan, which the fruits of it is there. They have five more years before their certificate of Army Corps of Engineer dies. Same thing with Ho'opili. We couldn't do it direct, so we went around about to the case in Lahaina in Kaoma, West Maui land to kill them on that end. Can't kill them on this end, kill them on the other end. But you have to, you have to do partnerships and alliances and strategies, you know? You have to do that. And you have to show you can prevail in a corrupt system. 
You can, but you just have to work harder. You know, you have to carry bigger water. You know, but it's doable. It's doable. That's why we're here. That's why we're putting it out to the public. The public needs to demand. Go to the mayor and say, we ain't voting for you. I don't care how many union guys you got in your hip pocket. We the people, look what happened to Abercrombie. This guy was driving around his commercials in his yellow cab saying, oh, what a good little boy by HCDA, building up Hawaii all over the place and threatening everybody, their lifestyle and everything for 30 years of law to protect it. What a good boy by Yeah, the unions are going to put me in the hip He got thrown out so fast you couldn't see his head spin. You know, well, do it to the mayor. Do it to this sitting uh, legislature. You know, yeah. because I've seen it happen with Mufi when she was going against the Hawaiian Trust land. Bingo, that guy. Uh, he he went for it, and that doctor who passed away was was against it, and boom, he never made mayor. You know, there's a certain point. We see this. They get Hawaiians in the legislature, like <coughs> <laughs> um, we see certain people that get in. And they want to put our Ivi Kapuna like Auschwitz on Kaho Olave. They think it's great for the Democratic Party. You know, and it's like, are you kidding me? You say you're Hawaiian, but are you kidding me? You know, and we see this travesty going on all the time. But people have to carry the water to know, because Hawaiians have turned down. They've shut off. They turned off. They come to a meeting. They put their say, and they think that that's going to be enough. <laughs> Hello. That is not even scratch the surface. Okay. So... It's 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 very difficult right off the bat, but it's doable. It's doable. We're letting you know out there it's doable. So get off your hiney and start doing stuff because there's not going to be anything left with all of these toxic waste sites that are not put on the Superfund list. Look, how can we get back these islands that are pilam for mucky die dead because you're going to get radiated from all the stuff around that you don't even know exists. You know, in Germany. Um, before the Germans gave back the bases, they said, clean it up. We ain't taking the land back. You know, Kaho Olave, $200 million fund, only 36 got spent. Where's the rest? The Navy kept it. The Navy kept it. Bye bye. <coughs> you know, blow yourself up. You know, and where's the demanding from the population? You did not fulfill your obligation. You know, you stole our car, and you think a cigarette lighter is sufficient? You know, okay, have a hubcap, have a mirror. <laughs> Hello. So, you, 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 you know, the thing about ignorant is to purposely ignore. These signs are all about you. You cannot claim moral hurt if you're given this information put on the table and you put no skin in the game. You can do by just signing this paper. You guys did wonders by showing up, signing this paper, you know, carry the ball, you know. But that's doing something than sitting down and watch this thing sink you know, as it's sinking now. So thank you for coming, and thank you for signing this petition. It will advance the cause. Mm -hmm. So do it. And not only that, um, as concerned elders, we have to fight our own people. Oh, that's yeah. a yeah. so I just that's a yeah. Okay. So when was in my prayer, yeah, the, the, yes, in my prayer to Keakua, he gave me a parable about the Hawaiian people and the Hawaiian kingdom, which is like, knock me out. He said there was a Hawaiian man who said, I'm going to have a farm, and I'm going to farm, but did nothing because he was always quarreling with his family. And that's our plight. That's our plight. No focus. Uh, you know, want to do good, but never get there because hakaka, huki huki, namu namu. You know, always battling, the battling against yeah. each other. As if before we get out the front door, to battle what's going on, mm -hmm. you got to battle your family to, you know, and anybody who's Kanaka knows what that's all about because <laughs> they're going to give you their whatevers whether you like it or not. And, you know, you have to be strong to do this kind of stuff because you're getting it from all sides. You know, you're getting it from all sides. And venom, I mean, if you want to see venom, who they can spit poison. Man. Mm -hmm. But the important thing is. As Keokua said, do the right thing for the right reason. He said, you know, my Keokua told me, this is his definition of pono. You've never heard it before. He said to me, if you order special order pipes and they don't fit, it's pono ole. It's got to fit perfectly. Mm -hmm. Then it's pono. Mm -hmm. So if you see things not fitting, that ain't pono, pono ole. You know? And it's in your pono na'au that you figure that out. You know? So 
it's doable. When we're bringing you the, the thing of hope, look, there are fighters out there. We're not getting paid. We care. You know, do something for your aloha pai aina, as grandpa always used to say. Do something for your country. Step up, you know. And the step up was signing the paper. You guys stepped up, came here, signed the paper, kapala pala, and that's going to help. It's going to help a lot. It's unfortunately a very well-guided missile because this is going to the right lady who can make a big difference. We're not just sending it to the Navy who will throw it in the trash can. Yeah. It's going to go to a lady who says, look, I've got this Thank paper you. in front of me. These people are, are agreeing to this that we have a right to be heard. Mm -hmm. It's going to be well well directed, I guarantee you. Yeah. So take 10 Hawaiian meetings like this on all islands and protract it in the future. Things will change. Mm -hmm. Eva Marina is not a marina. And you know what I wanted for Eva Marina? A local ia. Turn it mm -hmm. into a fish pond that yeah. feeds our people. Mm -hmm. yeah? Because they say it themselves, it's too deep to swim in. So why not make Hawaii Hawaii again? Mm -hmm. Instead of California and Las Vegas and whatever on the strip of Waikiki. The point is, we're so special because, oh, this last one, chicken skin, gotta give it to you before. Okay, I asked Keakua, what is the purpose, what was your divine purpose for sticking your finger in the middle of the Pacific and pulling out Hawaii? And he told me, to heal the water, land, air, and sky. I said, what? He said, yeah, that's my purpose. Hawaii, one day, it's going to heal the, help heal the earth because of our generational knowledge, native Hawaiian cultural practitioner. And he said, yeah, but I don't see that happening. He said, oh, no, no, no. Evil wanted to stop it. So um, they sent the kahuna uh, pa'au to do human sacrifice to mess it up. And the missionaries came to mess it up. And all these guys came to mess it up, my plan. But I'm riding their surfboard. I said, what do you mean? He said that you had to do damage before you could fix it. And the Kanakas had to appreciate what they have to fix it. Otherwise, and he said, that's why I created Mauna Kea. I said, you mean the Hiapo? He said, yes, because then they'll focus. They'll focus because the family is fighting all the time. So they have to have a purpose and a need and an end game. And I put it there for that reason, because it has to be damaged to be repaired. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. There's a reason behind this madness. So it's not hopeless. It's process. We're in the process. And you got to believe, because when you come down to it, I said, Kikua, you did all of this. Yep. I said, why? He said, I had one eye in 1835 and another eye in the future. And I could see all the possibilities, and this was the best one to save Hawaii. And that was in your original plan, yep? Yeah? It's in my original plan. So, let me get this straight. Hawaiians are like 200, uh, 500,000 cats going every which way. Correct. Hawaiians scratch each other. Correct. So, the only way the kingdom can come is through you. Correct. Because none of the sovereignty groups can see the future, and none of them can get everybody on the same page. So this is a divine purpose thing. Correct. Why? Because nobody asked Keokua what his plan was in the beginning. Remember Moses in the good book? I can see the promised land, but I'm not going to get there because I you know, berated the people and whacked the rock. But I can see the promised land. None of the sovereignty groups could ever see the future where God's plan was going. Because I've heard certain men say, my ocean, my land. Okay, you put your hand for a thousand years. Let me see how good it holds up after a thousand years. Guess what? You never created it. You can't hold on to it because that's not yours. You're just passing through enjoying the gift and grace what Kyokua gave you. But the arrogance and vanity of men have created a situation because, guess what? The original purpose, Hawaii is a spiritual kingdom and Kyokua Io is the true Mo'i. You never hear that. Okay, because it's coming from vain men. Okay, and as the true mo'i of Hawaii, the reason why things are sinking is the secular fake government. We don't need another secular fake government. I'm not talking religion, state church. That's something different. I'm talking spiritual um, pono na'au. In your guts, you know what's right and wrong. This is a spiritual kingdom that cannot hold the secular part. All 
Kumulipo, going back 50,000 years from Ki'i and La'ilai, 966 generations ago, chant seven. You know, the bottom line here is this place was created for a divine purpose and it's spiritual. All our chants talk about Akua or some spiritual component in this whole process, okay? There is no chant in the past that that's Hawaiian that talks outside of something spiritual. And that was cut off. Man is not righteous. Only God is righteous. The life of the land is perpetuated in Keokua through his divine plan, through his divine purpose, through his divine end game. And none of the sovereignty groups bring that up because they don't ask, they don't believe, and they don't go there. And that's why it don't work. You know, 200 something sovereignty groups, 1993. You know, four or five less. If they're not pot smokers or dope heads that are using kingdom law to get out of DUIs, hey, what's the purpose and need? Selfishness, greed, the grave of lust and greed, aole. And this is all part of this secular thinking of palapala money and not giving your first fruits back to Kekua. Why do you think the cause were there? Your first fruits go back to the one who created all. You know, so this component is spiritual, not religious. It has nothing to do with religion. It has to do with God's divine plan and purpose for this aina. Because not only God is linked into this, but all the ali'i were part of the land. Because if you listened, then the rainbow would stand. The kahili rainbow would stand. Because you're in connection to your pico, to your generation telling you, don't do that, do that, do that. Spiritual, spiritual. And that's what's lacking in the, as the Hollies would say, the greater conversation, <laughs> okay? You don't see that happening. It needs to happen, okay? Mahalo, that's, that's, that's it. Amen, oh, praise my. the Lord. <laughs>